When I was 22, I moved from a very warm place, Texas, to a very cold place, Boston, and I quickly discovered that you cannot survive the winter, much less get good pictures unless you know how to deal with the cold weather. So I'm gonna show you how to take care of yourself and your camera so you can get out there and get pictures nobody else really can. And first, it really is important to go out and take pictures in the winter. The sky is clearer, so everything is going to be sharper. If you're a wildlife photographer, you have a different selection of animals because they're probably changing in every different season. If you're a landscape photographer, you will get different weather conditions, clearer skies, the stars will be brighter. You can get ice reflecting the sun or snow filling the landscapes. And no matter what type of photographer you are, everything's gonna be empty because other people, they're warm with a hot cup of cocoa watching TV while you're out there creating a vision and making art. So let's get started with taking care of yourself. They say 90% of your body heat escapes through your head. That is total nonsense. But one thing I have learned is that the weirder and uglier your hat is, the warmer you're gonna be. This is not enough. This is warm, but actually too ugly. Sorry, Santa. It's scary as hell. Seriously, this is it. It covers my ears, it keeps my head warm, and look, it even like warms my chin. Add a scarf to keep my neck warm. You gotta keep your hands warm as a photographer. This is a ski mitten. It's about the warmest thing you can wear by keeping your fingers together. It keeps your hand warmer, but you can't manipulate the buttons or use a touch screen, so it's completely out. This is a conventional glove, but it's not a touch glove, so I wouldn't use it. So I found gloves that have a touch sensitive finger, but having just one finger on the glove didn't work well enough because I can't pinch and pull to zoom, so they were out. So I found other gloves where the entire glove is touch sensitive. You can see how it's kind of sparkles like that. That's a conductive material that allows the whole thing to work and they worked better with touch screens, but still not well enough. What I finally settled on, sort of a hybrid glove mitten with removable fingertips. And I can cover my fingers or I can reveal them. And when I need to manipulate the controls or do fine stuff, I just flip my fingers back. This is what you should buy. Up next, a coat. Skiers pretty much got this worked out. So get yourself a good ski jacket, and if it's real cold, some ski pants too. You need thick wool socks, not regular socks. Hiking supply stores like REI should have them. Then you need some big old boots, waterproof preferably if you're gonna be going through snow, and make sure you have good soles on the bottom in case you step on some ice. Put your gear in a camera bag, even if you wouldn't normally use one, because the camera bag will help insulate the gear and allow it to adjust to the cold temperatures a little more gradually. Put your bag in the trunk of your car or just outside so that it can more gradually adjust to the outside climate. Some people recommend putting it inside a second plastic bag, but I found just a regular camera bag is good enough. If you've been following our channel for a while, you might notice that this is not our normal electric car. We sold our Tesla Model S because it had the same problem that cameras do in the winter. The batteries die really quickly. Actually, that's not at all. Actually, that's a myth. Batteries don't die faster in cold weather. They simply cannot access the power that's in them. That's the reason our electric car had a fraction of its normal range in winter weather. That's the reason that the electric car would lose so much power when it was parked overnight at an airport in the cold. And that's the reason that if you're walking around with your camera, you're gonna run out of batteries much sooner than you would normally. But if you understand that, then you understand that you can take the battery out of your camera, warm it up, and suddenly get so much of that power back. So that's one of the tips I wanna give you is keep your batteries warm. Well, this is embarrassing. I went to this abandoned building, got some footage of me out in sub, sub, sub zero weather and my mic batteries died. I was talking about how batteries die in cold weather and then my batteries died and I didn't notice. Look, it happens to everybody who films themselves. You can't wear headphones while you're recording something and you would think if your mic died, like something would buzz or flash red at you that there was absolutely no sound. So here's what I wanted you to know. When you're out shooting in the cold, take the camera battery out of your camera and put it in your pocket. 
If you have a pocket warmer in there, that's great. This is keeping your battery warm while keeping your camera cold. You don't wanna be warming up and cooling down the camera because you can get condensation, but it's okay to get the battery moderately warm. Better yet, bring two batteries, keep one battery warm in your pocket and swap it out on a regular basis. Warming the battery up gives you access to all that extra charge that's in it that is not accessible when it's cold. Speaking of condensation, if you're out and the temperature is dropping, for example, if you're doing a time lapse, that can lead to condensation. If you're shooting a time time lapse and you try to clean the lens, you're definitely gonna misalign your camera and screw up the whole thing. So you can take some hand warmers and a rubber band and put them on the lens and that should keep it warm enough that it prevents the condensation from forming. Time lapses are also going to drain the battery on your camera very quickly, so I suggest connecting your camera to a USB charger. Then overnight, regularly replace the USB charger with another one so that it can keep going seamlessly. If your camera doesn't support a USB charger, you can probably get an AC battery adapter and plug that into a big portable power brick. If you're flying drones in cold weather, there's a good chance you could completely lose your drone. The reason is when you start flying, your battery is probably warm and thus the drone will be overestimating the amount of battery life. As it is in the air and cools rapidly, the battery life is also going to drop rapidly. I've seen it go from 80% to 20% in just a couple of minutes. And when it gets to about 30%, it's going to try to land wherever it is. So don't fly it far away, especially if you're flying it downwind because when you come back you're going to be flying upwind it's going to be working hard when the battery is lowest and thus it has the least power people really lose their drones this way when you get back to your warm house give your camera a chance to gradually acclimate to the warm temperature take out the memory card first if you want to unload your pictures really quickly and then seal your bag back up before bringing it into the warmth the air trapped inside the bag will allow it to adjust more gradually and help prevent condensation from forming for example on the inside of the lens in summary this winter get out there and get some pictures i'd also like to hear your favorite cold weather tips what clothing or gadgets have you found that really help you get great pictures in cold weather write your comments down below and sorry again for screwing up the sound on that at least i got some cool b-roll right bye